Welcome to Alberta Stories. I'm Todd Strickland, your host. The story we're going to share today is the story of an iconic figure in our community. Paul Knowles is the definition of warmth, generosity, and class. Portland has always had an underground black music scene, but there was a time in Oregon's history when black people weren't even allowed in the state. So imagine with me the amount of fortitude and resilience it took to come here and establish a vibrant cultural music scene that would create a venue for America's top black entertainers to perform at here in our Northeast Portland. We always hear about the Harlem Renaissance, but ground zero for the NEP's Renaissance was made possible by people like Paul Knowles and his wife Geneva. Join me as we listen to longtime Portland news anchor Ken Body and Paul Knowles share about this time in history. My name is Ken Body, and I'm reading the story of Paul Knowles Sr. I've known Paul Knowles for about 30 years, and I first met him when I moved to Portland from New York, and I started going out to his clubs. At that time, it was the Geneva's Club. I got here too late for the Cotton Club, but I had heard about the Cotton Club and knew about Paul Knowles. So once I started going to Geneva's, I also uh, found out about Geneva's sheer perfection and started going there to get my hair done, met his wife, Geneva, and we've just been friends since then. The feeling in Northeast Portland at that time in the early to mid 80s was vibrancy. It was the place where you went where you got to meet people who looked like you, being African American. It was the heart of the community, the hub of the community. So coming over to Northeast Portland, going to Geneva's, going to Geneva's Sheer Perfection, And running into people like Paul Knowles really gave us a sense of place being here, especially those of us who came from elsewhere. Before going any further, Paul Knowles Sr. wants to set the record straight about his nickname. Roy J. from the African American Chamber. Roy J. Roy came in one day. Hey, Mr. Mayor. I said, who are you talking to, Roy? You. I'm I'm going to anoint you the mayor of Northeast Portland. Roy, I'm okay just being Paul Knowles. No, 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 you're the, you're the mayor of Northeast Portland. That, that. So pretty soon the news media had it, then the television people had it. Now you go on Google and ask my name, put my name in, or ask him who the mayor of Northeast Portland. So it's Paul, she comes on and says, it's Paul Knowles, so and so, so and so, community activist, did it, did it. So when people introduce me, I tell them that, well, I guess I'm your mayor because you didn't vote me in, so you can't vote me out. <laughs> so you, That's you, good. You, you stuck with Paul Knowles. That's good. <laughs> While he may have never run for office, Knowles has won the hearts of many in Northeast Portland's black community as one of the ambassadors of its social scene. This was especially true during the days of Jump Town, the nickname the community garnered for its jazz clubs, barbershops, beauty salons, restaurants, and fashion scene. From the early 1940s through the late 50s, Jump Town was a cultural hub in Portland, and Knowles was at the center of it, most notably as the owner of the storied Cotton Club. Previously stationed in Spokane for the Air Force, he took the money he earned from working four jobs, repairing typewriters from 8 to 5, working at a hotel from 6 to 10.30, teaching skiing on the weekends, and doing janitorial work on the side of his other side gigs. And he bought the Cotton Club in 1963. And I never forget the payment, $1,488.20 a month. That's what I had to pay back, 12% interest. Wow. But it was humming, so I was able to make those payments. In three years, I said, Mr. Lee, we got it paid off. He says, already? I says, yeah. I said, I've been making extra payments. He says, well, what do you want to do? I said, I want to have a mortgage burning party. So I bought a, I got a number three tub, that number three galvanized tub, and put it up on stage. I said, ladies and gentlemen, the club is paid for. <laughs> the club soon gained notoriety for attracting celebrities and being the symbol of Jump Town's 24 seven jazz reputation. People like Etta James and The Whispers, Esther Phillips, Big Mama Thornton, all these people would come by and perform. And then on any given night, you'd look around and you might see Sammy Davis Jr. sitting there. I know my wife, uh, Geneva, went to see a concert with Sammy Davis Jr. She went to an after party and and the guy came over and says, excuse me, ma'am, but Sammy would like to talk to you. 
She says, okay, you can tell him to come over. He said, well, Sammy don't come over. So Sammy came over, you know, Sammy, about that tall. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, mama, how you doing? She says, I'm fine. So these are my girlfriends. She introduced them. She says, my husband and I own a nightclub and they have live music, so would you come over after the show? And he says, is it safe? She says, yeah, it's very safe. You'll enjoy it. So Geneva came on in. She came in and says, honey, honey, Sammy said he's coming over. I said, Sammy who? She <laughs> says, Sammy Davis Jr. Sammy Davis Jr. Hey, ain't coming hey, over hey. here. I said, she said, well, he said he would. He might, you know. So then Sammy walked in. I says, Sammy, Paul no. How you doing? He said, got any food here? So I took him out in the restaurant, had him some food. I said, Sally, don't charge him. It's okay, you know. And uh, I ran back. I says, honey, 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 Sammy's here. She says, Sammy who? Oh. <laughs> Joe Lewis came by the club. It was just the spot to see and be seen. People loved the Cotton Club because it was good. There was no violence, just a good atmosphere. Nall's influence on the city wasn't just relegated to the nightlife. His wife, Geneva, a barber by trade, had her own vision for serving the community through hair care. As one of the only female barbers in the community at the time, she spent nearly three decades perfecting her craft and building relationships in the community before an opportunity arose and Knowles purchased the property that would become Geneva Sheer Perfection Barber and Beauty Salon. To this day, the salon sits off MLK in Alberta and is one of the most visible and well-known Black-owned businesses in Northeast Portland. Knowles is quick to give all the credit to his wife. She was really the backbone. I was cleaning and mopping and <laughs> fixing stuff, and she was the extra one that was actually doing the work. Geneva's presence, much like Nall's moniker as the mayor, holds significant symbolic importance, demonstrating the resilience of Portland's black community in spite of an ongoing legacy of displacement and attempts to erase its rich history. For example, while Geneva's is still standing, the long defunct Cotton Club is now a gray warehouse that many in the community have long complained is an eyesore. This probably seems like a more fitting symbol for a city whose history of repeated mass displacement of black communities reads like a RICO indictment. First, the Vampor floods destroyed the burgeoning black community who migrated to Portland during World War II for shipping yard jobs. Then that community was relocated to the Albina neighborhood, which soon transformed into the legendary jump town only to be torn down over the course of decades. First, for the Interstate 5 Freeway, Memorial Coliseum, and Lloyd Center, and then Emanuel Hospital. Scores of houses were raised, and the once vibrant cultural hub was paved over with the stories only surviving through those who lived them, and a few historians who eventually caught on. The next decades, leading into the present, have only seen more displacement, largely through crime-related evictions and skyrocketing property values that have forced many in Northeast Portland's black community out into East County and other periphery suburbs. The communities that have replaced them largely have no idea about their history, and in many cases have built a new reality on top of it. Even digitally, when you Google Jumptown Portland, in February 2018, the first result you see at the top of the page is a sponsored ad for Pacific Northwest Skydiving. Perhaps it's no surprise then why so many speak of Knowles with such reverence. In spite of all that has happened and all that was lost, Geneva's is still standing. And Knowles, seemingly with a smile perpetually on his face, is still giving interviews. The golden years that he played such an integral part in bring nostalgia to those who lived through them and seem like a dream to many who've grown up only seeing Northeast Portland portrayed as a nightmare. This podcast has been brought to you by Diversa in partnership with Alberta Main Street, X-Ray FM, and the Numbers.fm. Diversa creates new worlds to bring forth a larger truth. For more information, go to diversaedu.com.